You know, I think, Rachel, I was, as we look at Steve Kornacki and the big board and look at these counties, I think we shouldn't lose sight of the message or the lesson that Georgia shows us about the rest of the country. Because what's happening is the, Georgia's changing. What we're seeing here in metro Atlanta and these counties that are coming in, so overwhelmingly Democratic, is a changing state, which is becoming dramatically less white. The big urban centers, metro Savannah, metro Atlanta, these are populations that are now much less homogeneous. You're people who identify as mixed race, Asians, Hispanics. This is the new Georgia. Mm -hmm. And there is a reason that you have both Marjorie Taylor Greene and Raphael Warnock representing that state. Yeah. Because this is a country that's changing and in some pockets is very resistant to that change, very angry about that change, and in other sides is very embracing of that change, very excited to have representation for the first time. I mean, keep in mind, in the history of the Senate, 2,000 people have served the upper chamber. 11 of them have been black. Mm -hmm. Right, so let's not lose sight of the fact that, A, you have two black men running for the Senate seat, but B, when you look at Georgia, when you look at these counties, this is a state that is changing like the country is changing. And the fact that it's split right down the middle yep. is indicative of an America that is at an inflection point demographically. And that demographic change has brought a host of political angst and conflict and, and despair in a lot of ways. And, um, and, and, and Georgia is the expression of that, I think. No, I, I, I'm so glad that you said that, because the reality is, is that one of our two political parties has built itself for that future. Mm -hmm. I mean, you heard Jason Johnson earlier tonight talk about it. The Democratic Party, which is the, the, the George Democratic Party, is one of the better run Democratic parties in the country. Mm -hmm. They were running ads, including on YouTube, in Korean. They were yeah. running in-language ads for Asian Americans. Vietnamese. For Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. yeah, they were running them in Cambodian. Spanish. In Cambodian. They understand that their base is the cities that are much more diverse and the suburbs that are much more diverse. And they've built themselves for that kind of a future. The Republican Party has essentially become a white interests party. And so they're, they're doing the Sean Trendy you know, strategy. They're still doing it. It's where can we find more non-college white voters? We'll just keep dredging them up and we'll find things that will excite them. And they're all cultural. They're all critical race theory and it's all book banning. And they're trying to find ways to dredge up more white voters without college degrees because they're even losing college educated white voters. And young vo vo white voters under 30, this is, this is new. They're going democratic. They're going the same direction as the rest of that young demographic that is multiracial. So they've got the Republican Party at some point. This strategy worked with Trump because Trump's a celebrity. But for now, it can work. It can work. It might work tonight in Georgia. I think it's unlikely, but it could. You never it's, know. It's a tie. Right? <laughs> yeah. But I mean, the reality is you can't get better than that with this strategy for long mm -hmm. because the country's only going to keep going in the same yes. direction. The, the, I think the it white population in Georgia is the lowest percentage of the state since it was in 1890. Yeah. We know what, we're ha what was happening with white people and people of color in the 1890s, right? Yeah. We are in a different America. Yeah. And, and I, the tension think, and the division you see, yeah. I think, is really an expression well, of that change. Right. And I think that's why it's so violent. I think yeah. that's yeah. why, and I think maybe the whole thing about candidate quality didn't matter in the context of this real fight over civilization, yeah. right? The other side, the Republican side, is fighting for what it's trying to hang on to, and that is an emotional gut appeal to the dark angels. But the other, you know, the, the Democratic Party and the broader coalition that was assembled in 2000 and 2022 really does represent reality. And so I think that's why it feels so violent. It, it is this sort of reaching back. It is existential. This, yeah, yeah. Right. I think it's also, I mean, worth noting, and I don't mean to sound like too much of a, a, a partisan in this specific way, but I think it's also worth appreciating that Atlanta is the cultural capital of America right now. Mm -hmm. That Atlanta is the hippest, coolest, best looking, most forward leading. Thanks, Tyler Perry. Leader. I mean, <laughs> Atlanta is the cultural leader of the United States in in a lot of different parts of the arts right now and in, in a lot of the creative economy. And to have that energy, to have that flowing into Atlanta, to have Atlanta be such a functional city, and for it to have that national leadership role. I mean, we had Nakima Williams here, who's the congresswoman from that district, but from, from an Atlanta district, but also the chair of the Democratic Party. And you see that 
swagger. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you see that yeah. confidence. You made that point. You yeah. see national Democratic yeah. leaders, particularly black women leaders, coming out of Georgia, specifically coming yeah. out of Atlanta, who are leading the country in yeah. every other way. And that yeah. is because that city is sort of the pulsing, throbbing heart of the country, of, of the, of the country in terms of culture and ideas. Yeah. And, and I, it I, is, I, I just think that has an important part of, to play in terms of how creative and forward-leaning the Democratic Party is. And, and, and